Praise the Lord. Before you're seated, let's go ahead and turn to the word of the Lord today. I'm so happy to be with you. We're going to the book of Luke, chapter 4. While you're finding that, the ladies' conference was a wonderful time, and that's why I'm in your vicinity. I was brought in to speak to the ladies of the Arkansas district. They're rearranging me here. Huh? No. Push it on up. There you go. Right up to the thing. I want to be as close to you as I can get. Thank you. They were concerned that you couldn't see my little prop. Now can everybody see it? All right. We don't want anybody to feel left out. And the ladies of the Arkansas district took care of me so lovely. And mostly, my hostess was the one with the mostess, and she's on the organ. And I love this lady. She's the real deal. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I was thinking that I was just going to kind of relax this morning and be back with the children. And I say I was thinking because that's what I was told. But when I packed, I always asked the Lord, what am I doing, Lord? Where, where are you sending me? And what am I doing? And the Lord spoke to me that I would be in this sanctuary this morning. And I know it's because he's got a divine plan. So we're just going to roll together, okay? Luke chapter 4, reading verse 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This is a description of our world. People need Jesus. And this is our commission because since Jesus resurrected and went back to heaven to prepare a place for us, we have become the ones that preach the gospel. We're all ministers of the gospel to set at liberty to set the captive free, to heal the broken and hearted. We're the ones doing that. And so today, for your hearing just for a little while, I want to minister on this message that God gave me. Get off of the devil's Ferris wheel. Get off of the devil's Ferris wheel. You may be seated. Pastor Sullivan let me know through his precious family, through his wife, that I had liberty today. And I appreciate that so very much. But I want to say publicly that my pastor knows where I am today. I'm under his covering. I have a home church in Madison, Wisconsin. And they pray for me. They keep in contact with me. And I am under his covering today. And as I minister, I give honor to the brethren on the platform. I'm under your covering as well. And Pastor Sullivan, I'm sure that maybe you're either listening or will, but I submit myself to you. This is really important. Submission is key. I want Jesus to use me today. And I am under the covering of this pastor. Get off of the devil's Ferris wheel. Now we have some children on the front row, and I want you to focus your eyes up here, front two or three rows, and I want you to know that I need you to put your back up against the back of the seat, your legs hanging down, and if you're a wiggly kid, take your little hands and hook them together, hold on real tight, because you're sitting on God's furniture, and you're in God's house, so we don't put our feet on God's furniture, 
We show respect in God's house. And as soon as I start talking to you, the devil's going to try to tell you that you have to use the restroom. You need to talk to someone. You have to get a drink. You have to do something. And I don't want you to listen to that. I want you to stay right here with me until I'm done. Don't get up and go out because someone back there will stop you and send you back. So don't try it. Just stay here with me, okay? And, and you say, well, Sister Oliver, is that all necessary? Well, it's sort of necessary not only for them, but it's necessary for me. Because I'm a big kid, and I, I had attention deficit disorder before they knew what it was and did not have pills. And so if you get up and go out, I will be following you, and I'll forget what I'm saying. <laughs> so try your best to stay with me, if you will. Get off of the devil's Ferris wheel. I was born into a family of four, two beautiful girls, mommy and daddy. My sisters were six, and... 12, my dad had made the promise to my sister that was six, you are the baby. There will be no more, you're the caboose. My dad was 47 when he made that promise. My mom was 40. They felt very secure that that would be the case. You know, two beautiful princesses and white picket fence and the dog and the whole nine yards. It was, it was done. Surprise! <laughs> I was what you call a oops. <laughs> and from the time I can remember as a very little girl, one of my sisters told me, you, you were found on a log in the backyard. <laughs> they never really wanted you. And one day, they're going to take you <laughs> Back to the orphanage, because <laughs> they don't want you. They found you on a log. For a long time, I believe that. And when we went on family trips, it was the three girls sitting in the back seat with the imaginary lines beside us, between us, you know? And my arm, my mom's arm that could reach around that back seat and touch every one of us if it need be. Moms have very long arms. And so I, I was understanding that my sisters were princesses, and then here I was, the entertainer and the talker and every teacher's nightmare. And God uses wiggly kids. So don't be dismayed if you have one of those. God's going to use them. And so one day, early on a Saturday, my dad came into the bedroom and sat down on the side of my little twin bed and woke me up. And he said, get out of bed. We're going to have breakfast. We're going to get dressed. Your mom has taken your sister shopping. And today, you and I are going to do something special. My dad was my hero. He was my best friend. He understood me when nobody else did. I couldn't believe it. My dad was always working. He worked two jobs so my mom could stay home with us. And, and my dad was rarely home. And sometimes mom let us stay up till 10 o'clock at night just to get to kiss him goodnight when he came home from the second job, the filling station. And so this was very special. I got dressed. I ate breakfast. Daddy put me in the car, and we were driving along, and I'm asking questions. Where are we going? What are we going to do, Daddy? It's going to be a great day. What are we going to do? Just wait. It's a surprise. I love surprises. Just, just wait. It's, we got to drive a little ways. We drove into the parking lot of what looked like a, a fair, a carnival. We didn't have lots of money. We never went to do things like that. And the first thing I saw was the Ferris wheel. Way up in the sky, all lit up, going around and around. We pulled in that parking lot, and my dad said, Come on, we're spending the day here today. Just you and I. Unwrite that! Unwrite that, Dad! All right, all right, come on. I was running way ahead. I wasn't holding his hand. I wasn't doing the rules, you know. Daddy caught up with the little five-year-old, grabbed my hand real tight and said, you stay with me. You don't run ahead. We went inside the gate of that little fair and I broke loose. <laughs> I took off running as fast as I could to that Ferris wheel, and I got in line. I I'm in line right behind the big people. Come on, Dad. We're going to ride this. Come on. My dad finally made his way to me, and he said, we're not riding that right now. Come on with me. 
My dad grabbed my hand. He was dragging me away from what I wanted to do. Parents always do stuff like that. He was dragging me away. He was taking me way in this direction, away from all the rides. My dad is dragging me to the other side where there is a little white house with a little window with an old man in there that looks like he hates children. I don't want to go over there to see the old man that hates children. But my dad is dragging me and I'm saying, but daddy, I don't ride that. I don't want to go over there and ride this. He said, come with me. Because my dad knew something I didn't know. He drug me over to that big long line. We're standing in line at this little white house with a window to see an old man that hates children. I don't understand all this. Sometimes when we come to church, we don't really understand everything that's going on. But I had to wait patiently in that long line. Finally, we walked up to the window. My dad took money out of his wallet and laid it on the counter and my dad said give us as many tickets as we can get for this amount of money I was starting to see something was happening I didn't understand that old man in the window was very important when it came to riding rides because he had something that you had to get first he took out a roll of tickets. That old gentleman began to unwind a big, long string of tickets. He took my daddy's money, and he handed us the tickets. Oh, of course, my little hand was quick. I grabbed those tickets. I'm going to hold them. My dad, understanding their value, said, no, let me have them. Let me have the tickets. We don't want to lose those. He folded them neatly. I remember putting them in his, his shirt pocket and because next to his heart because he knew they, these were worth money. We couldn't get more. You don't give them to a little kid just throw on the ground to drop carelessly. Because my dad knew you can't ride without a ticket. And when the music begins to play and you're invited to come to the front to get your tickets, a lot of people think, I don't want to go up there to the White House with the little window. It's kind of scary. Yeah. And they decide they're going to go have dinner. And they don't come this way. Where if they would just understand that it's not so scary once you get up here and you have a heavenly father that opened his wallet on an old rugged cross and he laid all that he had on the counter to buy you a ticket and you're not going to ride without a ticket. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not going to ride that final ride to heaven. Without a ticket. I could have stood on line all day at the Ferris wheel. And when it came my turn, I would have been rejected. Why? Well, I'm here. I, I'm, I'm dressed just right. I, I, I was holding my dad's hand. I stood in line with everybody else. I'm a very good little girl. None of that would have worked. I'm sorry. You must have a ticket. Every girl and boy, every mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, every teenager, everybody in this building. You're not going to heaven without a ticket. And Jesus is coming soon. He's coming soon. Oh, now we've got tickets. My dad's smiling. Come on, baby. Let's go get in line. You still want to ride the Ferris wheel? Yes, daddy, I want to ride that big one. Uh, that one right there. We got in line and the sun is beating down and the line is longer. And, and I can hardly contain myself. I'm so excited. And my dad's got the tickets right ne next to his heart in his shirt pocket. Because you, your ticket's the most valuable thing you have. And I don't care if you've had the Holy Ghost for 40 years. If you lose your ticket, you're not going. If you throw it in a drawer, if you think it's not important, you need to keep that thing right next to your heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your walk with Jesus is the most important thing in your life. 
We're walking in line and it's, it's so hot and, and, and I'm getting hungry and I'm getting thirsty and, and I have to use the bathroom and all the things the kids have to do. And my dad says, we can't get out of line. We got to stay in line now. We got to see this thing through. Doesn't matter how miserable you think you are. We got to see this thing through. It's almost over. Yeah. We finally got up there. My dad said, now, the very next time is going to be our turn. And you see, you're going to step right up there on that little rubber mat. And that seat is going to come around behind you. And I'm going to help you. And, and you're just going to sit down on that seat. You, you know how the pressure, the pressure is? That thing's going to come around behind you. you. I'm going to help you get up on that seat. I'm so excited. It's the red one. It's the red one. I wanted the red seat. Here it comes. I'm, I'm, I'm holding my dad's hand. I'm so excited. And that seat comes up behind us. And I hop up on that seat. And my dad sits down. And all of a sudden, a great big heavy bar comes down. Clank. There was a big strong man that checked that bar and made sure that it was locked in. We started going up in the sky. And I'm looking down and I'm rocking. I'm making that thing move. My dad has his arm around me and he jerks me back in the seat. He says, stop rocking it. It'll rock itself. <laughs> Sit back. Hold on to that bar. Quit leaning forward. You might slip under. Hold on to that bar. My dad put his arm around me and his other hand on my top of my little hand. Well, I didn't want all those restrictions. I just want to have fun. We just want to serve God and still do what we want. We don't want all these restrictions. Really? Not everybody else does all that stuff. Yeah, and they're liable to slide under the bar too. You ought to be thankful for a church, for a pastor that locks the bar in, that makes sure you're safe, that tells you how to get to heaven. Don't look at it, at it as restrictions. It's a safety. It's safety. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're flying through the air. I waited all that time. It, it, it's going to be so fun. You know, human nature is hilarious. We'll wait for two and a half hours in a long line, sweating bullets, hungry, thirsty. To ride a three-minute ride that turns you upside down makes you want to throw up. <laughs> and say, wow, that was fun. Let's do it again. <laughs> That's so weird, isn't it? <laughs> Here we are flying through the air. I'd never been on one of these before. It's a great big one. And we're going up through the air. And when that thing comes down the first time, oh, wow. My stomach came up in my mouth. It felt so great. I'm, I'm just laughing and I'm screaming and I'm having a great time. You don't want to ride with, rides with me. I'm a screamer. You'll get off of their death. I'm having a great time. I mean, it's just so fun. It's just so fun that the, the adrenaline is released. And you know what? You're closer to Jesus on a roller coaster than any other time in your life. Because when it's making its way uh, 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 up that hill and you know the, the drop's coming, you repent of all your sins. <laughs> Every one of them. You make sure you're right with God at that point. <laughs> we're having a ball. My dad and I, we're going around and around. I mean, it's just like when you first come to Jesus. Everything just goes great. It's just such a great time. But then something happened. This is a true story I'm telling you today. And I compared facts with family members when the memory of this came rolling back to me, when God was talking to me about this message. You don't want to hear the clanking of chains, the breaking of cables. You don't want your car to start creaking around and every little noise it makes, you're, oh Jesus, help us. Help us, Lord. I'm sorry I did this dumb thing, Lord. You don't want to hear those noises when you're on a ride. And you also do not want to be on a ride with someone that finds out that they can't ride rides. There are those of you among us. 
that you say, Sister Oliver, you're insane. I'm not riding a roller coaster. I don't like it when my stomach comes up in my mouth because I can't make it go back down. <laughs> Some of you found out the hard way. Your equilibrium gets off. You're messed up the rest of the day. So you don't do that. And there are those of us who are a little warped and we love it. We are going around on that Ferris wheel, just me and my daddy. I'm watching my dad that always is careworn, working hard, had a cross in, the, in his forehead. I got the same cross in my forehead now. But I watched that big grin on his face. Oh, it was the most wonderful memory we were making when all of a sudden we hear an awful noise. There is a mama and a little girl that's strategically placed above us. And the little girl finds out. So I'm going to be as gentle as I can. She cannot ride rides. She finds out that you should never eat a chili dog before you ride a ride. If, if you have a little problem, just think about birthday parties and balloons and happy things for a minute. Because I must tell you that as we are flying through the air laughing and having a great time, all of a sudden she cannot contain it. And it comes down in my hair, down my little pigtail, and down the front of my little white t-shirt. And worse than that, all over my dad's hairy arm. I am screaming and screaming. Now it is not screams of delight. And I am just hysterical. We're flying through the air. One moment everything's okay. And the next moment somebody else's yuck is on us. <laughs> Things change in a matter of a few moments. And while it is so very amusing, I do want to apply spiritually that it became what we would say the devil's Ferris wheel. Because there are people who just want to serve God, but all of a sudden you end up in life with somebody else's yuck on you. Somebody abused you. Somebody betrayed you. Somebody let you down. And all of a sudden, something you couldn't help. What should have been a happy time is ruined. And you're flying through the air. And you're wondering, why did this happen to me? Why did this happen? I'm screaming and screaming, and my daddy finally, he, he calms me down. He says, stop screaming. That won't help anything. Just, just listen for a minute. you got a heavenly father that will calm you down. He'll say, now listen, just squalling and bawling about this is not going to help. Listen to my still small voice. My dad had a big old bandana handkerchief. He and my mama had fights about those handkerchiefs. They were red. The fights were, my mom said, you can't carry that to church, Elwood. She starched him up white ones for church. But he liked his big red bandana. I was so thankful that day that he had a big red bandana handkerchief. Because he got that out of his pocket. He began to wipe off my little face. He began to wipe it out of my hair and out of my little pigtail. He was wadding that up and wiping it off of his hairy arm. It was all over us. It smelled. It was terrible. My dad is, is calming me down. Now, don't worry, baby. The ride's going to stop. We're going to get off of here. We'll get cleaned up. Everything's going to be all right. I mean, I'm, I'm hysterical. We go around another time. It's not fun anymore. We watch. Every car is stopping. They're opening the bar they're letting people off people are walking off wagging their heads we watched the mommy and the little girl get off and the little girl is so embarrassed and she's so sick and she didn't know she's going to be sick and you know what we have to remember that hurting people hurt other people and, and so when you get hurt rather than wishing they were dead you remember they're hurting you because they were hurt they're abusing you because they were abused. 
They're not a good mom because they didn't have a good mommy. She couldn't help it. But yet, her yuck was on us. They walked off to probably leave the park for the day. The little girl was so sick. Daddy said, we'll be next, baby. It's, it's going to come around next and we're going to get off here. What are we going to do then, Dad? Don't, just don't worry about that right now. Just one thing at a time. We, we, we'll get off of here. Our car came around to where it should have stopped and lifted back up off the ground through the air. Horrified, we're the only ones on the ride. We're going back up to the sky. And all of a sudden, it stops one car from the top. We're swinging in the breeze. We're watching as the man that operates the ride takes his key out and locks the box and walks off into the sunset. <laughs> now my dad's screaming. <laughs> Stop! Help! Help! You left us up here! Stop! We're both screaming. It's terrifying when your dad's screaming. <laughs> and you know, no one could hear. Why couldn't anyone hear us? We're screaming at the top of our lungs because they're having a good time down here. Step right up three balls for five dollars. Put it in the hoop. Corn dogs, funnel cakes. They're having fun. See, if I, don't, if I get fired from preaching, I can go work for the carnival. <laughs> they're, they're, they're all having a ball. It, sometimes it seems like nobody even knows what you're going through. If they, if they know it all, it's a pat on the shoulder. I'm sorry, I pray for you. That happens on Facebook. Check mark, praying, like. I like that you're dying. And I'm praying, praying, praying. Be careful what you're liking. And don't put your praying if you're going to be on there another 30 minutes because we know you're not praying. Yeah. It's become so casual. Nobody cared we were stuck up there. Nobody heard us. We were all alone. I verified with family that we sat on that ride for 30 minutes. Bacon in the hot sun in the 90s. Thirsty. With somebody else's yuck. On us. Finally, my daddy. Said, I'm going to get you off of here. I've got an idea. You just listen here, baby. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. I am going to stand up in this car. I'm going to hold on to the side. I'm going to throw my leg over the side. And you see those bars that are crisscross almost like a ladder. They go all the way to the ground. I'm going to grab a hold of that. No, Dad, don't leave me. Don't leave me on here. No, baby, I never leave you. Because he never leaves you or forsakes you. You're never going to be alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, listen here, baby. What you're going to do is you're going to scoot all the way over to the end. And you're going to stand up holding on to that bar. I'll have a hold of that car with one hand. I won't, I won't let it move. What I want you to do is... Grab a hold of my neck and put your arms around my neck and bunch up my shirt in your little hands. I want you to wrap your little legs around my waist and I want you to bury your head in my chest and I want you to close your eyes. Don't look down because I'm going to climb down carrying you and I'm going to get us to the bottom daddy I can't I can't do that I'm so scared dad I, I can't father I can't I can't come to that altar I'm so scared 
I don't think I can live this. I don't think I can give my life to you because I, I don't think I can live like these people do. Trust me. We'll do this one step at a time. Just trust me. You trust your daddy? Daddy would never let anything happen to you. You trust me? Yes, daddy, I trust you. We went through the process just like he described it. I remember to this day the fear. As I wrapped my legs around him, I laid my head, I buried my head in his chest. I, I nearly choked him around his neck, holding on to that shirt. Sometimes getting off the devil's Ferris wheel is not easy. But I'm telling you, it'll be worth it all. And it just takes a little bit of trust in the one who loves you the most. The one who died for you on the cross. The one who paid the price for your tickets. I felt my dad's breath. I felt him panting. He was an older man by this time. I can't imagine. But he climbed down the rungs of that Ferris wheel. And when his feet hit the ground, he was weeping. <laughs> he held me in his arms and we stood there and cried together. And then he said, we're going to go over here to the restrooms. And on the way over to those restrooms, we're going to stop and buy you a new shirt. And I remember I got a pink Mickey Mouse shirt. We were never allowed to get souvenirs. He walked me over to that restroom and he said, Now baby, I want you to go inside and I want you to wash your face and wash your hair out in the sink. Wash your hands and arms real good. Then you go in the stall and you, you take that old shirt off and you put your new one on. Well, Daddy, what what I do with the old one? Oh, oh just throw that one in the trash. Just put your, your new shirt on and, and then come back out to Daddy. I'll, I'll be waiting. He went and cleaned up. While I was cleaning up, he was, he was going to be waiting for me. You see, you have to be willing to throw away the old life to give it all up to wear a new garment. Hallelujah. You have to be willing to go down in the waters of baptism in Jesus' name. You'll come out a new creature in Christ Jesus. He said, old things are passed away. All things become new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't hold on to that old garment. I came out. They're all cleaned up. My pigtails dripping with my new Mickey Mouse shirt on. Oh, I'm grinning like a possum. Let's go ride the first wheel again, Dad. What are we going to do now? Let's, let's go get in line for some rides, Dad. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty too, Dad. Can I get a toy? Except you become as a child, you'll not enter in. You ought to embrace every day like that. What are we going to do today, Jesus? Oh, we're going to have a funnel cake today, Jesus. You're going to heal somebody. We're going to have candy corn today, Jesus. You're going to lead me to somebody that's lost. Today I'm going to talk to somebody in the airport. I'm going to tell them about you. It's going to be like a carnival every day when you walk with the Lord. You ought to embrace every single day like a child. Hallelujah. My daddy said, just wait, wait there a minute now. Just, you just hang on there, little girl. Just hang on. He said, uh, come on, come on with daddy. The whole time, he's got me by the hand. I'm looking up. But dad, what are we doing? Can't, can't we ride one more ride? Dad, can't, can't we go get something to eat? What are we, what are we doing, daddy? What are, we, what are we doing? My dad was headed for the exit. Would you play? He's headed for the door. Would you play for I don't want to go to the exit. I didn't, I didn't see the car out there. I don't want the day to end. We're just getting started. My dad's got me by the hand. He's walking for the exit. I feel like he's not even hearing me when I'm asking. 
Now, sometimes the Lord's quiet, but he's always got a plan. Daddy's walking me to the exit. I'm trying not to cry. I don't want the old day to be ruined. It's a day with just me and my daddy. My dad got me right to the exit. And he put his hands on my little shoulders. And he turned me around. He said, baby, we're starting this day all over. <laughs> what wisdom. We're going to pretend that never happened. We're going to start this day all over. It's time to get off the devil's Ferris wheel. Some of you simply have not gone to the gate and started over. And left it all behind you. There's not one of us that haven't been hurt. Broken. Betrayed. Someone said they love you and they hurt you. Someone left you. Someone lied about you. Cheated on you. But you don't have to carry that. Somebody else's yuck on you. The rest of your life. It wasn't God's fault. Because God doesn't make people stop sinning. He gave us all a free will. So quit blaming God. He's just right there ready to clean you up. And help you. To carry you down off that Ferris wheel. To give you a ticket. But you have to make the choice. I'm going to the ticket booth. May look kind of scary. I'm not sure what that man in that little White House thinks about me. But I know it's the right thing to do. And I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to bring my heart to Jesus. Listen, friend of mine, Jesus is coming soon. And if you're here today and you're a visitor, it's not an accident. The Bible says no man comes unless he draws them. And he brought you here today. Because it'll never be any easier than it is right at this moment for you to bring your heart to Jesus. Lifting your hands and saying, Jesus, I'm sorry for the bad things I've done. Please forgive me. I want a new garment. I want off the devil's Ferris wheel. I want to give my life to you. All you have to do is ask. You'll find out he's not like everybody else. Oh, if I let you look in my heart, you let me look in yours. Well, you better cry a little more. We're hard on each other. But you have to remember, he's not like that. They sung about it so beautifully today. Oh, he'll go the extra mile. He'll carry you. He doesn't even look in there. Matter of fact, he's so fair and just that when you were born and you were a little baby, your heart already looked like this because he started us all out the same. So we wouldn't compare. Oh, your heart's dirtier than mine. You sin more. Nope, we all look like this when we were born. We're born in sin and shapen in iniquity. So you bring that heart in the moment you say, Jesus, I'm sorry. With one sweep of his hand, he cleans out your heart. It feels so wonderful to have a clean heart. So, hey, Sister Oliver, you make a mess on the floor. Sin makes a mess. But when you get in the waters of baptism and they take you down in Jesus' name, all of that disappears. Hallelujah. I'm talking about getting a ticket. After he has cleaned out your heart, all you do is begin to thank him. Thank you, Lord. You stop begging. You stop crying. You stop saying, I'm sorry. He already forgave you. He doesn't even remember what you're talking about when you keep repeating what you're sorry for. 
Then you start thanking him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you're giving me a ticket. Thank you that you're getting me ready for heaven. And while you're thanking him, the Bible says he takes away your old stony heart and gives you a brand new heart. You're going to know you got a new heart because he's going to live inside there. He fills you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when he fills you, he wants you to know he's in there. So he fills you all the way up to here. You feel so wonderful. But he doesn't stop there. He keeps filling. Till the Holy Ghost gets here. And then your lip and tongue may wiggle. It may not. Strange words will come to your mind. And it'll be so easy to let them out of your mouth unless you listen to that voice. See, when words come to our mind before we speak them, we have a choice whether to let them out of our mouths or not. Some of us aren't good at stopping them. I don't want you to be good at stopping the Holy Ghost. Because that same voice will come and say, you're making those up. It's too easy. It's not that easy to get the Holy Ghost. That voice of the enemy will say, you don't sound like them. Don't sound like her when she talks and talks. Listen, you can't do it wrong. You're not going to sound like anybody else. It's going to be utterances, words you've never said before in another language. And so when those strange words come, you have a choice. You move your mouth. He doesn't move it for you. And you let those words out of your mouth. You're going to know when he moved in. It's going to feel so wonderful. And you're going to hear yourself saying... Those strange words. The Bible says you must be born of water and of spirit. Some of you have repented. Some of you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Some of you were baptized when you were babies. Listen, all of that's okay. That was your journey to the Lord. However, if you bring your Bible to me after church and you say, Sister Oliver, I found something in here you have not done. I, I found something in here you're not preaching. That's for everybody. I'd say, show me if there's more. I want it. That should be our attitude, not an attitude of pride. Because as long as you have pride, you're still on the devil's Ferris wheel. Lay it down. Leave the past behind you and progress. It's a walk with the Lord. So it's time to get a ticket. Because Jesus is coming soon. This could be the last service you ever have to give your heart to the Lord. You say, well, I'm not sure I even believe, Sister Oliver. I'm not, I'm not sure I believe there's a heaven, there's a hell. I'm not, I'm not sure I believe that Jesus really is coming. When my mama died, she had lived for the Lord all of her life. She was an intercessor. God used her mightily in prayer. She was in a nursing home. She had had Alzheimer's. It was a terrible death. Tiny little thing curled up in a fetal position. She hadn't walked. She hadn't sat up for a long time. But at 4 o'clock, one morning the Lord woke me up and said, Go to the nursing home. I went in and walked up the little hallway and the exit light was shining in her room, the only light, and I found her sitting up in the bed. Mama couldn't sit up. I found her fumbling with the covers, trying to get the covers off. I thought, oh, she's having some kind of a, a mental thing going on and she's going to get hurt. She's trying to get out of bed. She's going to fall. And, and I, I walked in that room, you know, in, in a frenzy. I said, Mama, you got to lay down. You, you can't get up, Mama. You'll fall. I took my hands and I, I laid my hands on her little bony shoulders and I started to lay her back down. Oh, it should have been very easy. But I felt resistance. I felt strength. I thought, this is so odd. She has had no strength in her body. All of a sudden, she had strength. Her legs over the side of that bed. I said, Mama, you've got to lay down. You've got to get back in the bed. All of a sudden, she threw her hands up in the air. And she looked straight up at the ceiling. Big smile came over her face. She said, don't you see him? 
He's come to get me. Please let me go. Please let me go. I'm not telling you a story I saw in a movie. Or I read in a book. They're out there. I'm telling you my own personal ones. Some of you have yours. You've seen it. You doubt that this is real? All you have to do is see what I saw. He's come to get me. Please let me go. Why was she so strong? Because I was watching right before my eyes her take on her glorified body. It was coming. This old flesh was leaving. It was dying by way of the grave. But her spirit was taking on that glorified body that we're promised. I said, Mama, you can go. I'll see you soon, Mama. Go be with Jesus. She was looking somewhere I couldn't see. I laid her down in the bed. I ushered her into the presence of the Lord. Please don't go get Sunday dinner today without making sure you're ready to go. It'll never be any easier. Matter of fact, I just want you to know my emotion is real. And if I could somehow convince you today to walk to the ticket booth, if money would do it and I had it, I'd give it to you. Because Jesus is coming. And I don't want you to be afraid. It can be kind of scary to make that walk. So I'm starting right back here. And I want you to know no one's going to touch you. No one's going to be in your face. The Holy Ghost is just going to fall. I'm going to speak a word of faith and it's going to fall. Is there anyone that you've never spoken with tongues before? Anyone? Would you come, honey? Anybody here? I'm just looking across, across the aisles. Anybody here? You've never spoken in tongues before. Children, you can have it today. We'll, we'll work with you. We'll help you. Don't be afraid. Come on, darling. The Lord's going to fill you today. Anybody else? I, I, I'm here because I don't want you to walk alone. Come on, darling. A anybody else? Anybody here? Parents, if you want to bring your children, if you don't want them to come alone, you want to bring them. God gives children the Holy Ghost. Souls are all the same size. They're not going to heaven because they're kids. They've got to have the Holy Ghost. Somebody else? Anybody else? No one should walk alone. That's right. Bring her right on. If you're quiet, you'll receive it quietly. Don't worry. He'll give it to you according to your personality. If there's someone around you that doesn't have the Holy Ghost, offer to come with them. Anybody else? This church has a great Sunday school program and most of your children have the Holy Ghost. But we all need a refilling too. We got to make sure we got our ticket. Come on, ladies. Anybody else? This row, anybody need the Holy Ghost? You never talked in tongues before? Have you talked in tongues before? Have you all? Come on. The Lord will give you the Holy Ghost. Anybody over here? Okay, let's make one long line and face me. One long line. And if you're bringing someone, stand behind them, okay? I bind confusion and distraction. I take authority right now over every spirit of man or of Satan. I lose peace. I bind the spirit of fear. I lose faith. I bind doubt and unbelief, and I lose truth. I thank you, Lord, for what you're getting ready to do. If you brought someone... Stand behind them so we can identify that they need the Holy Ghost. Church, would you stand to your feet?
Babies are not born without travail. Those of you who are intercessors, either get on your faces at the pew or go off in a Sunday school room, but we need people interceding for the lost. That ought to be a common practice. That's part of altar working. All right, don't, don't get loud yet. Everybody listen. Holy Ghost already moving. Everybody close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes because we're shutting out everything around us. While your eyes are closed, I want you to think about Jesus on that cross. I want you to picture the nails in his hands, in his feet. I want you to see that crown of thorns pushed down on his head. If you feel like crying, it's all right to cry. Big, strong men even cry when they pray. But if you don't feel like crying, that's okay too. People get the Holy Ghost without crying. But I need you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. I'm, I'm watching. Close your eyes. The second step is to lift your face. So Jesus can look right into your face that he made, that he loves so much. The devil wants you to hang your head down in shame. Jesus wants you to lift your face. The next step is to lift your hands. If you're praying with someone, don't touch them, please. Let them stand before the Lord all by themselves. Because one day you're going to face the Lord all by yourself. Oh, you're doing good. We lift our hands like when you're scared and you're a little kid and, and you run to your mommy because you fell down and skinned your knees and you say, Mama, hold me. <laughs> we lift our hands and we say, hold me. Could you lift your hands all over this building? There are people that need a refilling of the Holy Ghost. It's going to happen in your seats back there. Come on, just because you're not up here, don't just sit there. Come on, plug in with me. Agree with me. The last step is to use your voice. Ask Jesus to forgive you. Use the words. Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. You've got to say it with your own mouth. I'm sorry, Jesus. Please forgive me for my sins. He won't move in a dirty heart. Come on, let's repent. All together, I'm so sorry. There's some adults that need the Holy Ghost today. Don't go out that door. Come up the aisles. Get in the, in the aisle way. I'll come find you if you step out in the aisles. Oh, I feel an urgency in this place. Don't leave without the Holy Ghost today. Oh, it's beginning to sweep across this front. It's already here. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, receive ye. Nobody has to touch you. The Holy Ghost. Go on and move your mouth. It's already on you. Nobody has to touch you. Go ahead and speak out the words. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with precious blood of Jesus Christ oh, oh. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of sin Jesus is called
yeah.